Welcome to the Wealth Builders Podcast. I'm Billy Epperhart, and on this show, you're going to hear from industry leaders in business, real estate, and investing. Our Wealth Builder coaches and myself are excited to teach you how to make sense of making money for making a difference. Okay, let's get started. Hello, and welcome to this week's Wealth Builders Podcast. I am so glad that you all joined us. So this is going to be a really informative podcast. I've got the amazing real estate coaching team on with me today. We've got Frank Pulley, Pastor Mike Davis, and Troy Peterson. And uh, we're going to be talking about real estate and giving you an idea of the real estate outlook for 2024. Uh, so I want to give the guys just a moment to greet all of you, Frank. Hey, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, hopefully you can make the conference. It's going to be fun. Awesome. Pastor Mike. It's great to be here and I'm looking forward to this podcast and I'm just excited because people who are listening to this, they're wanting to grow. And so I am blessed to be part of this family. Amen. Troy Peterson. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. We're excited to be able to share in this opportunity and and looking forward to your results and the prosperity that's going to come to you. Uh, can't wait to see what God got for you this year. Oh, that's awesome. And just a reminder, the Wealth Builders Conference is this weekend, February 16th to the 18th. And uh, there's still an opportunity for you to get in on this conference. It is going to be an amazing weekend. So to learn more about it, you can attend in person or you can attend uh, through the live stream. Go to wealthbuilders.org forward slash events. And just a reminder with that live stream, you actually get to watch it for up to three weeks, which I think is such a great opportunity. So if you've got something going on this weekend where you can't hit every session, no problem at all. You can watch it for the remaining three weeks, but really the best experience is in person because we are together. All right, guys. Well, I think this is uh, super helpful for us to talk about the real estate market. Uh, there's a lot of uneasiness um, that we're hearing about, although all of us are doing deals. So I wanna encourage everybody with that, as well as our coaching family, they're doing deals. Uh, so there's, this isn't something to be afraid of, but it definitely is a market to understand. And so let's just start out and talk about interest rates. This is something that has been hitting the headlines uh, you know, what's going to happen this year. And so, Troy, I'm just going to start out with you and we'll kind of do a round robin here with thoughts on it. Interest uh, rate. Yeah, I know interest rates has been a big concern for everybody. And now I've been in real estate for 30 years. So when I first started, 8% was considered a good rate. And we're still be able to get owner occupied loans below 8%. So really, it's not a bad rate. We're just returning to a normal market. Uh, but now, Interest rates actually, I think, creates an opportunity for you. If if interest rates are scaring somebody else out of the market, then it opens the door for you to come in and make a deal on something that somebody else might not do. Uh, so it really can create an opportunity. Uh, and I always like to think of one of the phrases I heard when I first started, when somebody taught me, it's not about the cost of the money, it's about the availability. And so if I have to pay a little bit higher rate, that's okay as long as the deal still works. And if it works and we can make money from it, then that's great. Now, do I, do, I'm not an economist, but I, I'm gonna say this. I don't really see rates continuing to run away like they did over the last year. We really kind of seen rates stabilize. We've seen them actually start to take a dip back down a little bit, and they probably will settle. Most of the economists that I listen to say that rates are gonna settle in a bit lower than where they're at now, and we ought to see that market tend to stabilize out as we move into this year. So I think the good news on rates is really kind of trifold. One, it creates an opportunity for us to get into the market when other people are sitting on the sidelines. Two, the, the real panic of the rates is over and they've kind of stabilized. And three, we pretty much can see better rates ahead on the future. So really, I think on all ends, we got some good things going on there. Great, Frank? Well, I think the, uh, the interest rates, as Troy said, I mean, I've been 
investing since the early 2000s and rates were, you know, seven or eight percent for investors and, and even for homeowners. And hey, we all lived through it. We made money. Um, the interest rates are keeping people from maybe buying properties, especially first time buyers. But those people are renting, which is driving rental demand up. And uh, I just think that, uh, you know, uh, it provides us choices, some really good opportunities for investors. Uh, it's also holding inventory up, too, because people are not selling their properties okay. so that they're, uh, you know, where are they going to go? They don't want to give up that 2 or 3% loan uh, for an 8%. Yeah. And so that's, that's keeping yeah. prices up. Awesome. Great thoughts, guys. Mike? I just remember in the early 80s, I bought my first house at 15% uh, interest. And I remember my mom's house, uh, she bought it at 7% interest. And I had the mentality thinking, boy, they will never go back to 7% being at 15%. So praise God, praise God, praise God. I mean, <laughs> they're they're not 15%. So uh, like Troy said, I think the norm is between 7 and 8% as far as the market goes. But I think the bottom line is, is the cash flow. Can I make money no matter what the percentage is? And so I think it's just an exciting. This is an election year. This is a time where they're probably going to try to make the interest rates better. And uh, like uh, Troy, I've, everything that I've read, most economists say that the interest rates will probably bump down just a little. Awesome. Very helpful. Uh, yeah, I think, too, you know, what we talk to our coaching family about a lot is, hey, analyze the deal. I, and we know interest rates are out there, but really in that we're seeing a lot of opportunity and we get those cash flows. We get the other things, you know, the cash on cash return, those types of things. It's really been a time that we've seen people be able to purchase some properties at a great price. And then when interest rates do go down, guess what? We can do rate term refinances and we can improve our cash flow at that point. So that's great insight, guys. Interest rates are nothing to be afraid of. Actually, if we look at it the way you described it, it could be an opportunity. All right, Mike, I'm coming right back at you with this one. Let's talk about first time home buyers. We've been hearing a lot that, you know, people that want to buy a home, young people, they just can't afford the home. So uh, give us some perspective on that. Well, I think the great thing is that having the right realtor that knows all about uh, some programs and has a connection with a broker, because uh, my son, he just bought his first house back in August, and uh, he was so excited. You know, the Lord works out things. He did not have very much money for a down payment. But guess what? He got into a program where he could pay get the down payment and only pay 3% on the down payment. And then I think it was like 6%, six and a half or something. No, I take it back five and a half percent for the normal loan. So they provided the down payment as well as the loan. And uh, so there's some great programs depending on what state and city that you live in. And mm -hmm. they're out there and they're huge for first time home buyers. My second son, he's looking now he does have a, a down payment. And uh, but there's some great programs that he's been introduced to that can get that interest rate down into the low fives. So it's it's fantastic. Wow. Just have to uh, turn over a few rocks and get connected to the right people and they can get you some great deals. Wow, that's great. Uh, Troy, what are you seeing in Florida? Yeah, in Florida, we are seeing some great programs, too. There's a, there's one here in our market called uh, Hometown Heroes, which were originally set up for first responders, educators and such. But it's been opened up to just any first time home buyer where they can get a grant up to thirty thousand dollars to cover down payment, closing cost, buy downs. There's a variety of different things. Now, that happens to be a HUD backed program. And even though it's offered in our state, HUD is a federal program, so there's a lot of federal funds out there too. Now, these kind of programs are really cool. They they could they could be gifted money that can really help to to get rid of the cost and the entry barrier to get into a first time uh, uh, first time home. There's some restrictions, some rules that apply. But as Mike said, there's lots of great opportunity to really jump in and get into the game. Awesome. Frank, what are your thoughts on first-time home buying opportunities? 
I think the guys did a great job, but uh, there are, I think you need to look at what your local programs are. And as part of a negotiation on a, a home, if you're a first time home, home buyer, if you've got a good savvy realtor, you might be able to talk the uh, seller into doing uh, at least part or all of a, a buy down on the interest rate. So that's a good That's point. great. You, you know, and I, I, this is not like a, I don't know, it's more like a gut comment, I guess. But it just seems like too to encourage first time home buyers, it, it seems like building wealth really starts with buying a home. Yeah. And when you get in perspective to like maybe the payment sees, seems high. I remember getting into our first home. Wow, we did everything. We moved in with my sister in law. We did everything just to save 3%. And um, it really, when I look back on it, it was the decision that we made, even though it was a sacrifice, right, where we were kind of starting down that path of building wealth. It also just gave us a lot of like, hey, we own land, right? And that's really a big thing. Um, but also, if you're not paying yourself, you're paying someone else to pay down their mortgage. So for any of you that are maybe looking like, oh my gosh, we're scared to get into this, or it just seems like you're really even making somewhat of a sacrifice to buy a home. I would just say if the things, uh, building wealth is important to you, having your own place, uh, taking into consideration, you're actually paying yourself instead of someone else. Maybe based on this information, someone will decide to go ahead and pursue buying that first home. So I, I think it's a great step. And uh, I think, you know, interest rates eventually are going to go down for that refi and you can buy some at great deals right now. All right, you guys, let's talk about the rental market. One of the things that we're hearing is that because people can't afford to buy a home, that it could actually cause a little bit of an influx in the buy and hold rental market. So Troy, you are our resident property manager. Let's start with you. What are you seeing in this area? Yeah, we are seeing a, a good demand for rentals. And and I've seen this trend throughout history is, is, is being 30 years in the real estate business. What I have seen is whenever a housing market starts to go through a correction, renting becomes extremely popular. So and we've got a couple of things going on right now. We do have a group of home buyers that they, they're convinced that they can't afford it. They, they're going to stretch, so they'll go rent instead. And, and sometimes I see where rent actually costs more than home ownership, but their mindset has them stuck in rent. So why not have a property and cater to that mindset? Give them something to rent. Uh, if our housing market goes into any kind of correction, you also have another mindset where people don't want to buy a property for fear it might lose value, and that causes rents to go up. Another great opportunity if you're an investor to get in there and take the rents up. We are seeing a demand. We're going to continue to see a demand, and, and I just I think buying rental property is probably one of the best things anybody could really do to leverage future wealth. Uh, so you want to take advantage of the trend that we've got in the market right now. Awesome. Frank? Well, I think that depending on where you're at in the country, some places uh, rents are going up a little bit. Some places they're softening, but uh, they're not plummeting. That's the main thing. I mean, it, it's a really, really safe investment. And whenever I uh, come home from a day, you know, hard work or dealing with a tenant or something like that. My, my wife always reminds me that, honey, those people are paying our mortgage on that property. And it's like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> That's a good reminder. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that, uh, Becky keeps you on track, Frank. She sure does. <laughs> That's great. Mike, what are your thoughts on the rental market today? I think it's strong. And the reason being is uh, one of the greatest um, graphs that I know of is back in uh, each decade, they had a graph, how many homes, new homes were built. And so back in the 30s, it was 5.4 million homes were built in the 30s. And then the next decade in the 40s, it got up close to 10. And then thereafter, it was pretty much the, the same. It was anywhere from 20 to 25 million homes per decade were built. But from 2010 to 2020, 
it went back all the way down. It dropped off, Karen, to 5.8 million, almost the same amount of homes built uh, from 2010 to 2020 as it was in the 30s. So you're talking about a major, major shortage. And uh, so there's always going to be, uh, you know, everybody's saying, oh, it could crash. It could crash. Well, there's not enough homes for it to crash. So uh, <laughs> I think the new the new builds uh, is going to be strong. And so that will cause the rental market to be strong, Karen, because there's a shortage of homes and people can't afford it. And so Billy shows the graph about over the last 75 years, how that graph, it, 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 Steady really, increase. But it, it's a steady increase over the last mm -hmm. 75 years. And so that's a great thing. You know, the Bible talks about, you know, be wise. Be wise is the, those people that know business. And so I think it's time for the church to wise up to things like mm -hmm. this. Yeah, I think that's really good. I think, too, um, and we'll talk more about this a little later in our podcast, but the ability to to uh have a different like shift your strategy and like you did that recently and we'll we'll talk about that uh, but you have the ability to look at short term long term there's just some other ways that you can uh you know move your property into depending on the market uh, but you mentioned new builds and so let's go ahead and shift into a discussion on new builds there's a lot of opportunities, particularly in the financing or they're giving, it seems like uh, builders are giving a lot of incentives right now. And so, Frank, let's start with you. What's your thoughts on new builds? I'd love for you guys to comment on what's happening in the new build market. And then is it something that investors should be looking into uh, to add to their portfolio? Frank? Well, any place you go, they're still building uh, pretty steadily. And that's, you know, as a factor of what Pastor Mike said, I mean, they're trying to catch up with inventory. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, but that being said, because the new build market is softened just a tad, uh, a lot of these uh, builders are offering maybe a price reduction, maybe not, but if they're not, then they're offering things like, you know, incentives, upgrades, you know, upgrade carpet, countertops, upgraded bathrooms, things like that at, you know, a little or no cost. And uh, they're also doing uh, interest rate buy downs. I was just by a property the other day, um, actually a couple of properties, one of them, 4.5% 30 year fix. They're buying that down. Wow. And then 5.5 30 year fixed on a couple of other units. Wow, that's great. Troy, what are you seeing with new builds? Yeah, new builds, the builders, as Frank said, they in some areas, they are kind of softening. But they're still having to catch up with inventory, as Mike points out, where our new builds are, our, our, our new homes being added is at the lowest rate it's been since back in the Great Depression era. So the builders do have a lot to do to catch up. Now, that creates a wonderful opportunity for us. Uh, I once heard an economist say that housing prices aren't really set by the market. They're set by the builders. And that's so true. If yeah. you look at what the builders are pricing homes at, that tends to establish a value for an area. And what I'm seeing right now is even though, as Frank said, the building, the, the new home construction has kind of softened a little bit, the pricing is not coming down. These builders are holding the pricing firm and they are getting creative and they're creating new trends in our market that even existing inventory sellers are having to meet. One of those trends is buying rates down. Uh, buying rates down not only helps reduce the cost, but it makes the entry more affordable. Some of these builders have inventory homes. They're builders. A good sign of a healthy market is when builders are still uh, uh, aggressive enough to build spec homes so that they've got homes available for quick move in. And we're seeing a number of those out there and they'll offer incentives to help get you into those. Uh, I think new builds is a great way to look if you're a first time home buyer, you can use programs to get in, get low interest rates, and you've got a new home with low construction. If you're an investor and you're looking to get into a home that can cash flow, there's some opportunity there. And the beautiful thing that is, 
you're really going to have very little maintenance for the first several years. You've still got the new builder's warranty. You've got structural warranty. You've got brand new systems in there that tend not to have any maintenance issues. And as long as you set up good care packages on those properties, your maintenance costs are very low. So uh, I've been looking at new builds. I've been getting familiar with all the builders in the area. I think it's a wonderful opportunity to look at right now. Great. Mike, thoughts on new builds? I think it's thinking outside the box, Karen, is like if you're a first time home buyer, how about looking at a duplex or a triplex that you can buy? That's a great idea. And you get a great deal. And guess what? You're going to get a rental or a tenant uh, right next to you. And so I just think, you know, there's opportunities there. So I think that's a great thing to look at. Wow. That is a really good thought. And a uh, matter of fact, um, there has been uh, quite a few duplexes being built in one of the markets that we are in. And, uh, you know, if someone wants to live in one side or they're trying to sell these duplexes, these new builds, it might be a great opportunity to get in there, buy two and really good a good deal on those. Uh, so that's awesome. All right, guys, um, we have just a little bit of time left. I want to hit a couple more topics here. And one of them is uh, vacation rentals. And of course, uh, we do a lot of vacation rentals and there's a lot happening with vacation rentals. We are seeing a really good occupancy. We're super blessed, but we also are aware there are some challenges in some markets that uh, even from a just, um, you know, guidelines, city guidelines, things are coming up where people are voting against them. So we, we can't go in a lot of depth here on vacation rentals, but Mike, I'm going to start with you on it because you had a long-term rental that you recently shift, shifted strategies to more of a short-term strategy. So uh, maybe you can share about that and just give some thoughts on vacation rentals. Well, you know, Pueblo, the, the great city of Pueblo, Colorado, where uh, God dwells. But anyway, uh, uh, people, uh, you, I, I have to admit, I never thought Pueblo is a destination for vacation. And so when you taught on that, I thought, man, that's great, you know, for people who want to go to Colorado Springs and Denver. But then, lo and behold, there is a door open up for companies that are bringing in their their high tech people, their CEO type people and bringing them to Pueblo, Colorado. And so they're staying for months, sometimes even a year. They do not want to stay in a hotel. So they're looking for short term rentals. I found out this information through a realtor. And Karen, I tell you what, it's just been such a blessing. This is such a God thing. I'm telling you. I mean, it just knocked on my door without me pursuing it. And uh, so I was renting a home for $900 a month, a long-term rental. And lo and behold, we fixed this up. My wife has really been, she just been turned on to real estate because of this. And she helped me fix it. Well, okay, she did it. And uh, I bought <laughs> it. But uh, uh, she fixed this up. And Karen, this property that I was getting $900 a month is now renting for $1,800 a month. Wow. But that's not all. They are paying the utilities as well. And so I literally doubled uh, my income off this property. And so I'm now in the process of remodeling another home of mine, and it's going to be a short term rental. And the, the realtor that's helping me with this, you know, right now it rents for 830. She says, Mike, 15, 1600, no problem. So, wow. That's amazing. It is. Praise God. That's a God thing. I'm telling you. Yes. That's a God thing. Go Melody, right? Yes. <laughs> Melody and God. Yeah, that's right. That is awesome. You know, uh, when I was had my home in Minnetonka, Minnesota, I had done long-term rentals when I moved out to Colorado. And all at once, the market shifted on me. And I wish I would have known it sooner to understand this, but eventually I did catch on and turn that into uh, a vacation rental and I could make the numbers work. And so maybe some of you are just like trying to figure out a way to increase what you have going or to make your numbers work. And this is a really good strategy. All right. Hey, you guys, I'm going to just ask you to comment just real briefly on this and we'll get to the next one because we are running out of time. But Troy, would love to hear from you on vacation rentals. 
rentals. I don't do a lot of vacation rentals. I am looking at putting one of mine into, into, into inventory as a vacation rental. But I tell you, that's the best way to travel. I'm going to a conference here in a couple of weeks, and we've picked a vacation rental to stay at because it's a lot better than a hotel. So the demand, I know, is very strong out there. Awesome. And I know you had an experience at that one, too, which we'll probably hear more about in uh, at the event coming up that helped us know what not to do yes. <laughs> me, and what to do, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. Great. Frank. You know, uh, uh, my wife and I had our annual meeting here in uh, November. It also was our anniversary. And we had our annual business meeting. And we were looking at some hotels, wanted to get away. And we found some vacation rentals, which we thought, well, they're, you know, they really compete with the hotels. We got our own place. Um, it, it's nice and private. I think you're going to, I don't care what the laws and everything are. I think they're going to be a lot of pressure for uh, these cities to open these things up for vacation rentals. And uh, I, I see the industry still growing and growing and growing. So, and, you know, that's just one of many topics we cover in our uh uh, coaching po program with uh, wealth builders. So it is. We go in depth in um, the advanced, which is for people that have completed the first year. And then also, just so you all know, if you're interested in vacation rentals, we've got two sessions. One's in the VIP only that we're going to do hands on with vacation rentals. I'll do another session. And we've got four. Uh, we've got four workshops on real estate, four workshops on business, four workshops on investments at this next uh, event coming up, the Big Wealth Builders Conference. So if you want to kind of learn about real estate, it's definitely an event for you to kind of, you know, get your feet wet in real estate and get a good understanding. All right. One of the things we want to talk about, guys, was commercial real estate. We've been getting a lot of questions on that. Uh, what is happening in the commercial area for real estate? Troy, let's let's start with you. Yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of interesting things happening in commercial, and it's definitely something worth looking at. Now, I, I am seeing investors and, and even myself, I'm going to be a little bit more particular about the type of commercial properties we go into. We are right now seeing kind of a migrating shift in how commercial properties are used. With all the technology that uh, we've got for virtual meetings today and Zoom and remote work, there's a lot less demand for the big office space. But there's an increased demand for some of the small workers. When you see uh, people uh, springing up with uh, like a massage therapist, a hairstylist, uh, a consultant, there's, there's a whole business class out there where entrepreneurs have a business that requires an office space so they can't work in their home but they're not going to fill a big space so we're watching a whole new demand come up for the smaller entrepreneur for the medical center for these type of things so as this shift happens in the market there's a brand new opportunity coming up for these types of properties and commercial and i think it's really something to watch karen wow that is so cool frank what are your thoughts you know, it's kind of interesting. A lot of people shy away from commercial, but commercial tends to hold its value. And the beautiful thing about uh, commercial is it's based on performance, not comparable sales. And so the better performing you can get your uh, commercial building, uh, the more valuable it is. The other thing, too, is you're able to take advantage of what's called double or triple down leases, where your uh, tenant is actually uh, willingly paying your property taxes. Um, your uh, insurance, and sometimes if you have a kind of a common a uh, area that, you know, several of your units share, uh, they call them CAM charges, common area maintenance. They split that up and they pay for that. You don't have to pay any of that like a, a single family home. And loans on commercial properties are really based more on the performance of the property rather than your personal financial situation and credit. Oh, that's great. Mike, what are you seeing in commercial? I think a good thing to look at is, again, outside the box is mixed use. You're going to have on the first floor business and mm -hmm. retail. And then on the second or third floor, you can have residential. And so uh, if the if the business side starts to wane a little bit, 
you know, you've got the tenants that are paying, helping you pay the bills. And so the mixed use, I think, is something that uh, everyone should be aware of. Yeah. Wow, that is a great strategy. Thank you so much. All right, you guys, the thing that, you know, we're all kind of thinking about in the back of our minds, but let's talk about it and how it's going to affect real estate or the impact is it is an election year. Uh, and so, I mean, some people are like, okay, let's just sit back and see what happens this year. I think we've got a little different perspective to really like, uh, just analyze, find the deals. It's an, a year of opportunity. Uh, so Troy, I'm going to start with you. What are you thinking with this election year? How should we be viewing the real estate opportunities? Well, I'd say the first thing that we all need to be aware of is be careful what we're listening to, what news source we're pulling in, uh, because you can find a lot of gloom and doom. You can also find a lot of bright sunshine. You really just need to make sure that what you're listening to is a true trusted factor. And I'd encourage you, number one, to really tune in and listen to the heavenly voice and what God is saying, because there is a lot of opportunity. Now, in an election year, I do expect our politicians to do their typical thing that they're going to do this time of year and try to manipulate and get rates down and make things look better and feel better so that they can get votes. Uh, what does it really mean to you? Hey, at the end of the day, if you're buying a home, it's because you absolutely love it and you're buying a sanctuary. If you're buying an investment property, it's because the numbers make sense and it works. So... I really, even in an election year, in anything going on, good, bad, or indifferent, I, I don't advise waiting because I've known people that have been sitting on the sidelines waiting for a decade for the right opportunity right. to jump in, and they've missed it. So we want to come in. I do think we're going to see a lot of good opportunities coming up this year if you just take time to look for them. That's really good. You know, Troy, that's great advice. Over the holiday, we are talking about it and like, oh, if we would have bought real estate 10 years ago, and then we're like, well, we can't change that, but we can buy today so that 10 years from today, we're not looking back and saying, oh my goodness, we should have bought real estate. So that's a great perspective. All right, Frank, what do you think about election year? Well, we've already seen gas prices. I mean, they're almost, almost free. So <laughs> a lot of other of other things are uh, are following suit. I, you know, I guess you enjoy the ride until the election and then we'll see what happens afterwards. I mean, it is a nice sweetheart time for the next few months and, uh, you know, where we might enjoy some good benefits of, you know, the election year coming up. So enjoy the ride and we'll see what and pray for uh, great leaders to be elected next year. Awesome, Mike. I know we're running out of time, but real quick, uh, I, I think we're always supposed to look at the practical, but you know what, Karen, the Bible also says, my God provides all of my need according to his riches and glory. So mm -hmm. as far as the believer goes, I believe there's going to be opportunity for us, no matter who's sitting behind uh, or sitting in the White House. I believe God wants his people to prosper and he can cause us to prosper whether there's a democrat or republican or whoever's in the white house god's people are always going to be taken care of amen. amen that's so good and historically and we've talked about this before you know when you look at the times where the greatest wealth was built it was during the great depression you know even the the crash or whatever the recession in 2008 to 2010 People that were aware of the times, right? Just like is a car, which we have that anointing in us to understand what's happening and knew what to do. Those, these are times where wealth is built. And so we just need to keep that in mind too, not to get into that place of fear, uh, like Troy was talking about and, and uh, Mike, you, you touch on and Frank as well, but this is a time for us to keep a clear head, hear from God, and really step out into the opportunities that he has for us. And I can't think of a better way for you to get in an environment, to get into a place of people that are hearing the sound in the spirit, as Billy is saying, as this upcoming Wealth Builders Conference. I'm telling you, it's amazing to get with people that believe the same way you do. And Billy and Becky have an anointing. Uh, they are called to help us build wealth for purposes of the kingdom and building generational wealth. And you do not want to miss this. Uh, so again, you can go to wealthbuilders.org forward slash events, get registered. We would love to see you there. And then I'm just going to get some 
final thoughts from each of you guys here before we sign off. Frank, I'll start with you. Get yourself educated. Make sure you get mentored because this is a, uh, an industry that uh, you can do really well with, but the fewer mistakes you make and have good guidance, uh, the better. And of course, always remember to rely on, on God's grace. Awesome. Troy. Yes. It's, it's important to understand that God wants you to prosper. Jesus came for with good news for the poor, and that good news is that you don't have to be poor. Uh, but as Frank said, you do want to make sure that you're connected with people that are going to share the wisdom with you and help to be able to impart right instruction. And there's no better place to get that than at Wealth Builders. So we really hope that we'll see you at the conference this weekend. And I can't wait for you to be able to soak up the information and get all that God has for you so that you can be blessed and prosper the way he intends. Amen. And Pastor Mike. Amen. Psalms 35, 27. God takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants is one of my favorite scriptures. And so God is not withholding the prosperity. I just feel like we need the right connection, the right atmosphere. And what better place to do that than wealth builders? So please, mm. you need to come. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amazing uh, Wealth Builders real estate coaches. And thanks all of you, our wonderful Wealth Builders family. Uh, Billy and Becky pray for you every day. We love and appreciate you. And we can't wait to see you this weekend, either in person or by live stream. God bless you and make it a great rest of the day. Thanks for listening to the Wealth Builders Podcast. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate and review the show. If you want to learn more about who we are, visit our website at wealthbuilders.org and check us out on Facebook. We'll see you next time.